Hope you guys are having a great week so far. Uh, I'm pumped to be bringing the word tonight for you guys, for young adults and youth. Um, I really pray that you guys get something out of it. Um, 
tonight I'm going to be starting a new series um, which is called um, Lessons from Bible Characters. Um, in the next couple of weeks, um, Vic and Paul will also be sharing on this topic, um, talking about different Bible characters. Um, but tonight um, I'm going to be talking about the, uh, the life of Joseph. He's one of my like, all-time favourite um, Bible characters. Um, if you've never read it, the, uh, the story about his life is in the start of Genesis. Um, so you can read about that. If you don't like reading, um, you could probably watch uh, Joseph and I think Joseph, yeah, Joseph and the Code of Dreams, DreamWorks movie, absolute like all time, just next to like Prince of Egypt, like one of the best. So good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really hope you guys get something out of tonight, and I pray that it would encourage you in your walk, walk of faith, and um, just to build on the life that God has given you. Before we just get started, um, let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for this time that we can come together um, just to seek your face deeper, Lord God. And I pray that you would bless um, every youth um, group that is uh, meeting tonight, Lord God, and, and their Zoom chats, whatever um, forum that they're on, Lord God. I pray that your presence would be there, your spirit would be there and that you would change us tonight, Lord God, that you would give us revelation of your love and of your peace, Lord God. And I pray that you would bless our church during this time, our families, Lord God, our friends, Lord God, um, and that you would continue to give us peace during this time um, as we're in COVID, Lord God. Um, bless the rest of this week, bless this night, and uh, pray that you would have your way ultimately. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, um, I think before we get into it, uh, the crux of the sermon, I think it'd be like good just to have um, a background knowledge of um, the life of Joseph. Um, so basically the story of Joseph is, is found um, at the start of Genesis in chapter 37. So basically Joseph is um, one of Jacob's many sons. He actually, Jacob actually has 12 sons all together. Um, and if you read the story, it's pretty crazy. So Joseph is the son of Jacob, and Jacob is the grandson of Abraham. So you've got Abraham, Isaac, then you've got Jacob, and then from Jacob you have Joseph. And basically Jacob has these 12 sons through four different women. And that is like, that's nuts. Um, when you read the story, um, Jacob um, meets this beautiful girl called Rachel. And anyway, her dad ends up stitching him up to work seven years to have her hand in marriage. He does that. The dad ends up stitching him up, marrying him off to Rachel's older sister. He gets stitched up even further by having to work another seven years to be married to the girl he actually wants, Rachel. Anyway, he ends up having children with not only Rachel and her older sister Leah, but even their, their servants each. So he has four kids, four women that he has kids with, which is like crazy. But it's awesome that God still uses the mess that he's in and to, to bring deliverance to, to their culture, which is, which is so cool. Um, so basically, Joseph is the, one of the youngest brothers, second to youngest. And Benjamin is the youngest brother. You can imagine how like, tough that would be having 10 older brothers. That would, I don't know if that would be awesome. Like You would probably be able to play like a basketball game having like five and five each or like a soccer game. Like, that would be sick. I think I'd you'd probably get sick of them really fast. I don't know. <laughs> um, but Jacob loved his son Joseph more than any other brothers, it says in, in Genesis 37, because he was the son of Rachel, which is the woman that he loved. And he had um, Joseph, or she had Joseph in his old age. And, um, <laughs> and because he loved him so much, he made him, like, he made him a coat of many colours. Many of you would have heard that he made him a coat. And because his dad loved him so much, like, I don't know, to me it's a bit strange, like, if your dad loved you heaps, I don't know, I would be like, can you just give me, like, a hundred bucks or something? <laughs> like, oh, thanks for the coat, dad, like, sick, but money would be so good. <laughs> but I, I don't know, it's just, I think back then it was, like, a big deal, so, yeah, anyway, <laughs> it's pretty cool. So, um, Joseph's brothers, they absolutely hated him because he was, like, the dad's favourite and giving him a coat, showing it off. Um... They hated him so much that they planned to kill him, but he actually, before, sorry, they, they planned to kill him, they throw him in this pit to die, but there are some merchants um, walking by, um, and it actually says that they sold him to the merchants. So these merchants then go to Egypt, and they sell Joseph as a slave to Potiphar, who is 
um, one of the guys under Pharaoh. Anyway, so he's serving, he's serving Potiphar. He, he ends up becoming um, one of Potiphar's servants of the house because he's doing so well. Potiphar trusts him so much that he becomes in charge of his house. Long story short, Potiphar's wife gets like super into him and then tries to sleep with him and he's just like a solid man of God. So he runs away. Um, he tries to run away, I guess. And um, Potiphar's wife just claims that she tried, he tried to sleep with her and gets him thrown into jail. And um, as many know the story, Pharaoh has a dream and Joseph interprets a dream, comes out of jail um, and then fulfills the, the dreams that God had for him when he was younger. So um, that's pretty much the, the head of the story right there. Um, but through that, basically what I want to talk to you tonight about is endurance, how Joseph really like endured that time um, of that season being in jail, being thrown in a pit, being sent as a slave, how he endured that time to have a strong and built a strong trust in God, a true relationship with God. Um, you know, any, any part of that journey, I think, you know, Joseph could have totally just called it quits, said, God, I've had enough of this. Um, your plan looks like total trash right now, but um, he believed in God and God saw him through. And I don't know what you're going through in your life tonight, but um, I would pray that this, as we get into this, that this would really bless your life and you could be going through a really hard season right now, but I just want to believe that God will turn anything around for the good because he is in control and he knows what he's doing. Um, um, so you can write this down as we get into our first point. It's um, be ready for the setback. So you can write that down, be ready for the setback. So as we look at the life of Joseph, so he basically gets these dreams and these visions from God, right? So he has these two dreams. The first dream is that he, he's like, um, uh, like a culmination of hay and he's su surrounded by all these bunches of hay which represented his brothers and basically they were bowing down to him. So, and then he had another dream which said that the sun, moon and the, and sun, moon and the 11 stars would bow down to him. Again, kind of representing his brothers or maybe his family, his parents. Um, and like you'd imagine like these kind of words would come through quickly if God's given them to you, right? Like God would start to bring those promises to fulfillment, start making them happen. But, you know, however, in, in many stories of the Bible, instead of what we might think is God um, making, those things come, <laughs> making those things come to pass, it almost looks like it's going in like the most backwards direction ever. And like he gets thrown into a pit where his brothers get sold as a slave to Egypt like his dreams just do not make sense right now anyway then you can imagine what he's going through he would be just be totally bummed and you'd just be like man suck this like this sucks <laughs> oh man um and i think sometimes we might question you know when we're going through that stuff like man god what's going on in my life you've promised me some crazy things um and now you know you're going through some stuff and you just it's so easy to lose faith in god um but joseph knew um, I think Joseph knew that God had a plan for his life and, and God, God knew what he was doing and he loved Joseph, he had a plan and I think Joseph just needed to stick it out and he did. Um, I think as we look at our own lives, I think it was always those times of setback that are always the most challenging but it's always those times where um, God works in a way that he, he doesn't when we're on the mountaintop. It's when we always hit setbacks, when we always hit adversity, where, where we come to that crunch moment where it's like, oh, what, what's your faith really made of? Is it like you're going to put your money where your mouth is? Like, are you going to trust in God during adversity? Are you going to trust in God when things don't go right? And Joseph went through through those a couple of, <laughs> more than once, a couple of those, um, those seasons, I guess. And I think if we never have to face adversity in our lives, if we never have to face any rejection, any backlash through rough seasons, I really don't think that we're going to grow spiritually mature into the men and women of God that he's called us to be. Because it's during those seasons God does his greatest work in us. And if we never face with anything, if any adversity, we're never really going to grow. James verse 1 uh, the 2 to 3 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So I think just because you get older, I think even in youth and young adults, you think like, oh, I'll just go through the motions of life, um, get more life experience, grow in this job, whatever, and I'll just become more of what God has called me to be. But 
I'd like to challenge that thought tonight and to say that, you know, I've, I've seen people in their 20s and 30s who are, who are more spiritually mature than people who are in their 40s and 50s. And I don't think that it's necessarily your age that makes you more wise and makes you more spiritually mature. I think it's when you dig into the things of God and you take responsibility for the life that God has given you that, that really builds in that, that maturity that, that God has called us to have. Um, so I think, yeah, be ready to take that upon your life, to run after the things of God. Don't wait for things to come your way. Setbacks are going to happen. Um, press into God. Let him strengthen you. Don't, don't wait to be a mature person. Don't wait to grow into like, God to answer everything. But work with God. He, he's called us to do it as a relationship, us together. It's not just him. He's not just this father who treats his kids like, oh, set everything for you. Like we're, like we're, well, I don't know <laughs> Like we're just ne- like we're needy from God. God wants to give us, uh, you know, like bread of food to to eat and drink of, not just milk. He wants to grow us as as adults, mature in the faith. I hope that kind of makes sense what I'm pointing out there. So don't so so be ready for the setbacks in life. They're always going to come. They're always going to come. I wonder. I remember. Sorry, what um, one of my favorite preachers, Owen Owen McManus, said from Mosaic Church. He said, "You know, life never gets easier, but you just get you get stronger." So, just take that one, chuck that one down in your notes if you're taking notes tonight. It's a good little one-liner. Um, the second point tonight is is do not give up. See, once Joseph was thrown into jail after Potiphar's wife accused him of trying to rape her, surely by now this dude would have had enough. This dude would have, like, thrown in the towel, been like, man, like, suck this. Like, I'm doing everything right. I've got promoted to look after the house. Now my master's wife is now chasing after me. He must have been a good-looking bloke. That's all I'm saying. But, you know, he's doing everything right by God, but it just seems that no matter what he does, no matter what direction he's going in, he's just getting absolutely starved. Like, he's just getting wrecked. But what I love about Joseph is that no matter what's surrounding him, no matter what season he's in, he keeps trusting in God and he has such a faith that God will see him through. You see, in the story of Joseph, um, he becomes... You know, God has so much favor, favor on his life. Even in the prison, he gets uh, an appointed head over prisoners. So you read in the story that um, there are two guys. One's a baker and one is a, uh, a cupbearer. And they have these dreams and they ask Joseph to interpret the dreams. And, you know, Joseph, he's working in a jail for crying out loud. He could have been like, man, like stuff you. Like <laughs> God once gave me a dream. Look where I am right now. As if like you want me to interpret yours. Like stuff God. He could. He had every reason to throw in the towel. But he kept faith in God, and God spoke to him, gave him a word about those two guys, um, and th- and they came to pass, which is amazing. Um, I think more than ever now, faith. We need to go through those seasons where our faith is tested. Or we are going to go through those seasons where our faith is tested, and it's in those moments God's going to do His greatest work. But endurance is really tough. Endurance is tough. Um, it's going to take time and it's going to take a lot of hard work and not giving up. I love Christine Kane, um, another one of my favourite preachers. Um, talks about endurance all the time and she talks about how, you know, the gospel is so simple. The word of God is simple. It's just not easy. You know, it, it requires all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our strength. Hebrews 12.1 says... Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. I love this verse here because it says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And what I love about that, this is just like a quick sidebar, is that it talks about things that hinder and things that, and things that are sin. And I'd like to propose this idea to you tonight is that you know, things that hinder us aren't necessarily a sin, but will, will hinder us from the word of God. So, you know, it could be a, a friend, you know, <laughs> it could be a, a, some of the music you're listening to. It could be some of the people you're following on Instagram. Yeah, it's not a sin, but it's also not leading you to God. It's not helping you um, in your relationship with Christ. So it says, let us throw off everything that hinders. Throw it off it means if it's hindering you, just, man, throw it off. And the sin that so easily entangles let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. It says that Joseph was in prison for about 10 years before he was released. And I, and I believe we need faith to get through those moments. Don't get me wrong. Faith is so crucial. But I think there's something other than faith alongside it that we need as well. And I think it's patience. 
patience and faith. And your patience will be tested when you know, we go through those setbacks and we're going to go through those trials and it's going to you know, show whether we're willing to trust in God, um, whether he's going to actually see us through. And he will. His promises say that. James 1.4 says, Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. I pray that we would have that same strength and perseverance that Joseph had while he was in jail with every reason to give up. He had every reason, man. He was thrown into jail. He was sold by his, he was sold by his brothers to merchants, sold by merchants to Egypt. Then, you know, his master's wife <laughs> accuses, like, tries to sleep with him, then lies and gets him thrown into jail. The dude has every reason to throw in the towel, but he doesn't give up. He trusts in God. He has faith that the words that he had when he was you know, back at home, those dreams that they would come to pass. Um, and I pray that um, you know, we would choose to trust in God and have faith. I love what it says in Galatians 6 verse 9. It says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So that's the last point you guys can throw down. If you're taking notes, the point is always chase Jesus. Always chase Jesus. You know, when I, I think back to Joseph, when he had those dreams, you could imagine the only thing on his mind would be those dreams coming to pass, right? And, you know, how one day his brothers would bow down to him, how one day the, the sun, the moon, the stars would bow down to him. And, um, you know, I think sometimes we always want to chase promises, but I think for this guy <laughs> like, to try and chase that promise on yourself in a sense of, like, forcing your brothers to bow down to you, like, mate, Good luck, like, <laughs> that's not going to, the sun, the moon, the stars bound down to you, like, good luck trying to do that on your own strength, man. Um, but what I admire about Joseph is that he knew how to chase Jesus and to be responsible with what, with what God had put into his hands. I think so many times the devil knows how to wreck our thoughts, um, our belief systems, and to make us thinking that we need to make God's promises come to pass in our lives. Um, and for us to take control. But the vision that Joseph had, you know, it could only have come about by the hand of God purely. Like the dude was in jail. He had no, he had no hope to get from a place of being in a pit and then being a second in charge of Egypt. It was just, it was just crazy. So basically, um, you know, Joseph gets, um, uh, the, the cupbearer gets a, ends up going back to his job, working for um, Pharaoh. Pharaoh has a, has a dream and calls Joseph out of jail to interpret it. God gives him a word about that dream. And um, it says that Pharaoh then makes him second in charge, which is like, it's just crazy how he just goes from jail, just doing his thing, bank to second in charge. And it said that during that period of time, Egypt was the, the greatest city in the world at the time. So Joseph became a, a jailer to, to potentially the second most in charge person in the world at that time. Um, but I think it's so easy to get distracted during this age, even when God gives maybe he gives you a prophetic word or even a dream, like that would be awesome. But um, Sometimes we can just try and make it happen on our own thing and we refuse to let God lead us there. See, I think like, um, you know, we can have so many words in our lives and we do, God speaks prophetically and, um, and I think God, you know, God doesn't play favourites with his, with his kingdom. There are no favourites in the kingdom of God. Um, we're all equal before God and um, the thing is, is that, you know, you'll see people get words and maybe they will never come to pass. And you've just got to like question, like, why didn't that come to pass? Um, and it's because it's, there's a difference between the people who chase after the things of God and chase after God and the people that chase, don't chase after him, I guess, in the end, is the ones that don't come to pass. And because God has created us to do this together, this life together. And a prophetic word is, you know, something that will come to pass through what God does, not on our strength. And God has given us the free will as Christians, whether we want to answer to him and to live out those, those prophetic words or not. You know, we have the free will to reject God, to kind of do our own thing, go our own way. That's the beauty of the love of God, you know. Um, and I think the you know, Bible talks about going from glory to glory, from going from strength to strength, from going of grace to grace. We're always moving. We're always getting stronger. We're always changing, becoming stronger men and women of faith. And I really believe that, you know, 
if, if you're staying, if you're the same place you were six months ago, and if you're in the same place you were a year ago, man, are you in the Word? Are you, are you digging into the things of God in your life? Because God wants more for us. He, I really believe that. And I've even seen it in my own life. Um, and I think Joseph, during this time, going back to him, he, he kept moving. He kept handling the setbacks. He chased after God. He never gave up. He endured so much hardship. And through, through that, God made him a mighty man and, and, deli- and delivered him out of the jail, delivered him out of those places and fulfilled the promise. He says um, it, in, in the Bible, it talks about how, um, you know, what, this, what the enemy meant for evil, God has turned around and used for the good, which is one of my favorite verses. He can turn around anything. Um, so I pray tonight that, you know, whatever season you are in right now, whether you've had a word of God over your life, like Joseph or you haven't, that we all have the same mandate on our lives. Sometimes we think that we need a prophetic word to God tell me what to do. And don't get me wrong, I think God can do that. We need to understand the purpose for our lives. But I think the mandate on our lives before maybe a job or like a, a calling is, is simply to love God. And I think it's, that's, that's the crux of the cross right there is that we have to get that right, to love God with all our heart, our mind and our strength. That is a calling in itself. That's the greatest calling. And if we can't get that right, it's going to be really tough for us to sustain the other things. And, and when we take that calling seriously of loving God with all our heart, our mind and our strength, man, it's going to, we're, going to have to, we're going to face some serious setbacks in our lives. We're going to have to start to change. And I think you know, even in my life, I hate change. <laughs> I hate change. And it's, it can be really tough. You lose friends. You kind of have to, you kind of feel convicted a bit differently and you just kind of have to start changing what you watch, what you're listening to, what you're feeding yourself, what you're looking at during the day. And there are going to be people that don't agree with you anymore because you, God's just starting to do a real work in your life. Um, and, you know, sometimes we think that that calling is so, um, so simple, so we don't really give it much attention to love God with all our heart, mind and strength. It's like, oh, yeah. We do that, that's easy. But I'd like to position that it's, it's man, it, the Bible talks about it. It's, you know, whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. It's about giving up your life for God. And that's, <laughs> that is one of the hardest things. And that's, you know, ultimately what I love about Joseph is that, man, he went through some serious issues, some serious problems that, you know, some things that we will never have to face. Different, we'll have to face different issues in this day and age. But some of the things he went through were just crazy. Who knows what he would have been in. I remember John Bevere talking about the dungeons that Joseph probably would have been in jail with that, you know, they were so small that you probably couldn't even stand up. You had to lie in your own, your own feces and your own junk. You know what I mean? And that's just crazy. And, and they would feed you what's called bread of affliction, which is enough water, enough bread to just keep you alive. They were trying to kill you slowly. You know, those, some of those physical challenges, I don't know if we'll ever have to face one day, you know, but, um, what I do know is that God will see us through in every season. If we have the faith to stick it out, he will see us through. And I pray that we'll become more like Joseph each and every day. You know, I don't know what you're going through right now. This, this time that we're in can be a great season for some people. I know for me, I'm kind of chilling out, not doing too much. It's, it's good. But for some people, they've lost their jobs. It's family can be doing it really tough. But I want to position this that that God is not done with us yet as, as a church, as a youth group, that God will see us through in every season, that he has planned our steps um, before we even were on this earth, that he knew, he knows our thoughts, he knows what we're going through. Um, but it's up to you. It's up to you. Joseph could have given up in the jail, <laughs> even before the jail, even when he's at home with his, with his brothers. Imagine the hard time his brothers would have been giving him at home, like Joseph, his, his father's favourite. Um, you know, hanging out with his brothers, getting his dreams. His brothers aren't getting this dream. He had every reason. He would have been getting hell from his brothers saying, oh, you're this, you're that. He could have just given up right there, but he kept going. He kept persevering in the faith. And I want to just say that to you and encourage you tonight. Whatever you guys are going through, there requires a step of faith from your part. God has given you a free will. He said he's standing at the door waiting. He's just waiting for us. Um, and I think we go through so many hardships in life just because we don't know how to go that 50% with God. We don't know how to meet him where we are. Sometimes we think God um, is just going to give us everything we want. But he's saying, I can't, you know, I can't go past that 50% because I violate. it's a violation of the free will that I've given you. And this, the same free will he gave us, Adam and Eve, to sin. You know what I mean? So I think 
whatever you're going through, man, get into the word, get into prayer, develop that relationship with God. And, and it all, at the end of the day, it all comes back to the cross, the blood of Jesus that was shed for our sin, that we can stand here today and, and have a future and, and live with uh, eternity in mind. And I really just believe that, you know, God really wants to do a deep work in your spirit. And if you're open to what he wants to do, he's ready to do a work in you. He stands at the door waiting. So I really just hope that this word has encouraged you tonight. Um, Before we um, head to our bunch groups, why don't we just pray and we can get going. Lord God, I just thank you for this time, Lord God. You're such a good father. Lord, you've given us everything we need for this life, Lord God. I pray that you would give this generation, this youth group and young adults, a courage and a strength to endure through the seasons like Joseph, Lord God. The strength that you gave him, I pray that your hand would be upon us and that your strength would be upon us and your courage would be upon us to step in to fear but God and to step into our freedom, Lord God, and to step into everything that you have called for us um, that you've given upon us, Lord God. I pray you'll bless the rest of these weeks, Lord God, and we're just looking forward to when we can meet again as a church. Um, and we just believe that you're going to do a great work um, in and through our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. I love you, love youth. Can't wait to see you guys again in hopefully not too long. Um, Have a great rest of the night with your bunch groups. Um, Give them a shout if you're not sure what to do at the moment. But yeah, we'll see you soon. Love you guys.